today that I am more time is ticking away, they would do only what really matters. If all of us do only what truly, truly matters to every one of us, this would be a fantastic place to live. What advice would you give young people courting or young people in a situation where they feel alone and abandoned and they are wondering, what's gone wrong? How do I get it right the next time maybe? Oh. <laughs> Love is important, right? Uh, yes. A lot of young people are watching this, so I'm just <laughs> thinking because they're having, uh, you know, 11 love affairs right now oh, no. on the Facebook. Okay. On Facebook? <laughs> yeah. They're trying parallelly 11 different love affairs, hoping one of them will fall into place. We need to understand that Certain… certain things don't get better with practice <laughs> Wow. It is… it is when men and women came together in marriage. I'm talking about another time, not to the current population, I'm talking about another time, all the oldies were here. When men and women came together in marriage, they knew nothing about anything mm. about each other. Mm. Even looking at a woman directly was a taboo and now for the first time they looked at this woman, everything was new and fresh. There was so much excitement, there was so much coming together, there was so much exploration and discovery. Though for millions of years people have done the same damn thing, <laughs> still for that individual everything was fresh and new and it was shared just between the two of them and all this stuff. This made it last. Now before you come to marriage, you've seen too much of life. And you… in your mind you're comparing one and the other. Now long-term commitment becomes difficult. People come together either out of helplessness or greed most of the time because there are… it's a mutual benefit scheme. Wow. Back to… back to the economics of it, <laughs> Yes. No, not just economics, uh -huh. 
there are needs in a human being. There is a physical need, there is a psychological need, there's an emotional need, social needs, economic needs, all kinds of needs. To fulfill these needs, you make a deal. If you live with a deal, it's invariably going to be ugly. Deals are made and pick up what you want and go home. Then it's okay. What do you say? <laughs> you make a deal, you make your money and go home to a place which means something to you. When you're making deals at home, then it becomes ugly because there's no place to go or you'll find a place to go. <laughs> My question um, is about yoga and of course inter ahead of International Day, we're very privileged to have you here in Nairobi. My question is about um, the benefits of yoga which everybody talks about and you know, everybody knows that yoga has great benefits for the inner well-being as well as the external. However, in Nairobi, with all due respect to certain people who are in the craft, I notice that housewives overnight turn into yoga gurus because they watch some DVDs, they watch a few programs on TV and then decide to start teaching yoga. Oh, really? Yes, and um, <laughs> that is of course a big concern because people do understand the benefits of yoga but they don't understand that if you're going to be training under somebody who's not quite qualified in the craft, what are the disadvantages? So I'd possibly please request you to highlight what the disadvantages of practicing with, I'm sorry the term may sound harsh, but a quack yoga teacher would be. Thank so you. So harsh. I just sound yes. so harsh, but go ahead, go ahead. Please. They're all ladies, she said. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me, let me clear this a little bit because one thing is, as you said, yoga is not a craft. As there is a science and technology to create external well-being, there is an understanding of external situations which we call a science and a technology or a methodology through which we can create external well-being. Right now, this hall is… you know, we are controlling the climate with conditioning. Outside climates can be controlled like this. What about the inner climate? So the technology to create the inner climate, to create the inner ambience of who we are is yoga. It's a science and a technology at the same time. There's an exploration and there's a method. The dangers of not doing it properly are many, I don't want to explore that now, so close to the International Day of Yoga and put off people <laughs> uh, But we must understand, when we say yoga, however innocuous it may look, whatever the practice that is being taught, it always has a spiritual dimension attached to it. I don't know if… It's okay if I tell you my own story. Please, please, that's how, why we are here. How I got into the yoga for wrong reasons. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> this happened when I was just twelve years of age. I was in my ancestral home, my grandfather's place. This is a place where all the kids have assembled from many cities for our vacation time. Mm -hmm. So one of the sport for the boys is, to jump into a well which is about eight feet in diameter and about hundred and fifty feet in depth because we always went there in summers, the water is down by about sixty feet drop or seventy feet drop in that range. So we want to jump in, you have to jump in properly. If you go somehow, your brains will become a smear on the wall <laughs> and there is no steps or grip or anything, just holding the rock, you want to come up. It was hard and just the sheer pressure of it would make my fingers, all my fingernails bleed mm. because all my weight is at the tip of my fingers. And I was pretty good at this. One day we were doing this and a man who was over seventy years of age was watching us. Of course we ignored him, he was too old to be alive in our experience of life <laughs> Not now, I'm saying at that time 
when I thought even twenty is too old. Yes. <laughs> so this man without uttering a word went and jumped into the well. I thought he's finished. <laughs> but he came up faster than me and I didn't like it. <laughs> so I asked him how. He said, come and do yoga. I followed him like a puppy. So I'm saying, I got into it for all the wrong reasons. Mm. But somehow this became so much a part of me, I did not even think of doing it, but not a single morning ever passed without yoga happening. I'm using the word yoga happening because when I look back and see, I never made up my mind I must do this. It simply took me over from inside and things happened like this. And uh, twelve years later, something so phenomenal happened to me that everything changed. Why I am saying this is, the nature of this existence is such, even for the wrong reasons, if you do the right things, right things will happen to you. That's how world is made, that's how the creation is made. So, <laughs> doing it right is very important because there are many dimensions attached to it. I went into yoga only for physical prowess. After I got into it, I came to know there were other aspects to it which were psychological or mental. So physical and mental prowess, this is all my thing. I never imagined nor did I ever know there is another dimension to it altogether. But there is always that dimension to it. So when we transmit yoga, there is a spiritual element to it. This is the reason, for example, now for this International Yoga Day, when we teach, the Isa Foundation does not teach yoga in such a large scale ever. We teach what is called as Upa Yoga. The word Upa Yoga literally means either sub yoga or pre yoga. For in Indian languages, today the word Upa Yoga is being used as something useful. But actually the word originates from this that we made yoga in such a way, we took out that aspect of yoga which has physiological and psychological benefits but no spiritual element to it. When we are transmitting soul such a large scale, it's best to do it that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that she mentioned this and you are interested in children with your mm -hmm. footprint, <laughs> yeah. about four months ago it came to my notice that a little over nine thousand children committed suicide in India below eighteen years of age. In the age groups of ten to fourteen, seventeen hundred children committed suicide in the last one year. When I heard this, see, no life does not value its own life. You try to catch an ant, it will do everything possible to save its own life. It does not think, ah, this is just an ant's life, let it go. There's no such thing. Every life intrinsically values itself as the highest thing, isn't mm. it? But a child, a child is an exuberant life. A child is a bundle of joy. A child is a fresh life. Mm. If a child wants to take his own life or her own life, then we are doing something fundamentally wrong with our lives, isn't it? Something very fundamentally wrong in a society, if children start committing suicide, I want all of you to look at it this way, it's not like statistics, nine thousand whatever is not a number. Suppose in our lives, our children in our home committed suicide below fourteen years of age, can you ever overcome that, I'm asking? If they died of disease or accident or something, that itself is difficult but somehow we will come out of that. But if they commit… if they took their own life, we clearly, clearly know we've done something fundamentally wrong, isn't it? So we should know we're doing something fundamentally wrong in a society when children start taking their own lives. So when I heard this, it was deeply disturbing. Why are our children killing themselves? Then 
I said, off the cuff, I said, we must touch at least ten thousand schools and bring Upa Yoga to their life. And that day ten thousand looked like a big number. Then I traveled these nine states and met all the chief ministers and the education ministers and things like that. All of them responded with such enthusiasm. For this yoga day, in the next two months, we are initiating Upa Yoga in over thirty thousand schools. <laughs> and the significant aspect of this is, we are not training the children, we are training the teacher. We… our own teachers, we have trained forty-five thousand six hundred teachers. These teachers are imparting this to the school teachers. In every school, two to three teachers are being trained. Above all, we made an elaborate video for a twenty-minute practice. We made an elaborate video about showing how it should happen. So these newly trained teachers will only correct the practice. They will not literally teach the practice. All they have to do is they have to correct. We train them for a day to understand what are all the wrong things that people can do mm -hmm. and correction. And these children will go through this just not for one day, five days of the week through the entire year, probably for the entire school time, this will go on. And we are trying to also involve parents wherever we can. Teaching yoga irresponsibly, if you… right now, this is the most important need, that is… See, in terms of external technologies, we've hit the ceiling, all right? Whether you buy your iPhone Z8 or not, that's the next model coming up <laughs> You still don't know how to use your iPhone 4 fully <laughs> That's a fact, believe me. You still not explored the full range of things the damn thing can do, yes or no? It's too many you're things. Right, you're right. So whether the next le level of phone comes or computer comes is not the issue. Upgrading human beings is the most important thing that needs to happen in the world. So in this effort, this International Yoga Day I see has been a phenomenal step, mm. moted by our Prime Minister, but United Nations took this up. So these things that we have, if I can elaborate on this a bit. See, human intellect is sparking like never before. Never before in the history of humanity, this many people could think for themselves, yes? Mm. Now once this happens, logical questions arise. Once logical questions arise, so many things which were taken for granted, which kept people in some kind of control within themselves, if not liberated, at least controlled within mm. themselves, is all going to collapse, heavenly solutions will collapse, believe me. No, I'm not talking about you guys up there <laughs> That's quite safe <laughs> When people start asking questions, heavens will crumble. It's bound to happen. If you don't pull it down, your children will, believe me. Things that you believe, your children refuse to believe, yes or no? Because unless it makes logical sense to them, they're not going to take it. Whatever the authority, you can say the scripture says this, you can say God said this, you can say somebody said this, they are not going to take it unless it makes sense to them. This is a very positive development in the world because this means truth will be our authority. Authority will never be the truth. Mm -hmm. This is the future of the world <clears throat> So, this International Yoga Day is at just at the right time, and when the Prime Minister mooted this idea, as it was… as she was saying, 177 countries came together, it was almost like the world was waiting for it. It was waiting for India to take a step, but we took such a long time because, you know, we are a little large nation, we take time <laughs> to take steps <laughs> But it was almost like the entire world was waiting wow. for somebody to say this because everybody knows if they may not have consciously addressed it, but everybody knows tools for self-transformation are needed. And tools for self-transformation should not be in the hands of a guru or an organization or some other higher authority somewhere, no. 
Tools for self-transformation will… should be in the hands of every individual. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you a simple question, don't feel offended. Do you know all of you brush your teeth today? Yes. <laughs> Hello? Yes. yes. This is because you have your own brush, the instrument necessary for cleaning your oral hygiene to take care of that, you have it. Suppose it was in the hands of the Kenyan government <laughs> They fixed up in hundred different places in Nairobi, you can go and have your teeth brushed <laughs> Probably you would do it once a month, yes or no? Because you have to stand in a line to have your teeth cleaned up. Only because it's in your hands, as it's necessary, you will take care of it, isn't it? Similarly, tools for transformation, which are logically correct, scientifically ascertainable, these kind of tools for transformation, which does not demand any philosophical adherence, which does not be, uh, demand belief system, which does not come from any authority, but from your own understanding of your system, mm. this is needed for the world. The time is very ripe because human intellect is sparking like never before. You can't bring our so-called well-being by telling them a philosophy. It's not going to work. Mm. It's already not working. Because it's not working, you see a rapid movement of people seeking chemical solutions. To be peaceful means have a drink in the evening, it's become a norm. I'm asking all of you, whatever your age, in the last twenty-five years, don't you see at least a five hundred percent increase in the consumption of alcohol and drugs and psychiatric prescriptions? Yes. This means we are moving towards madness. Yes. See, for example, a maximum period or a longest period of economic well-being compared to any other society in the world. But today, thirty-nine percent of the European population is under psychiatric prescription med medication. Three hundred and fifty million people year on year, they are consuming prescription medications for psychiatric problems. So with economic well-being, there is no guarantee that you will get human well-being. If human… if economic well-being has to translate into human well-being, you need tools for transformation within every individual because the possibility of economic well-being taking us to ruin is very much glaring in our face. In pursuit of human well-being, we've ripped the planet apart, isn't it? Just today afternoon they were telling me, that only seven percent of Kenya is under forest cover. Mm. Oh my God, I'm… believe me, everybody in the world believe Kenya means ninety percent forest and Nairobi <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that is the image everybody has, mm. but they told me seven percent, that is… that is horrific, I'm telling you. It's not a simple tragedy. You don't know what is the kind of disaster that… disaster that can evolve out of seven percent green cover mm. in any nation? In a continent which everybody believes is full of jungles, full of nature, full of wildlife, everybody believes this. If only seven percent under green cover, that's tragic. Even India is better than this. Mm. With the kind of population pressure we have, even the percentages of green cover in India is way better than this. So when we go like this, we must understand for a long time we looked up in search of well-being. Mm. People became delusional and my delusion and your delusion fought battles and wars and still going on. Many people can't give it up yet, mm. <laughs> yes? Now from heaven we shifted our focus to get our well-being from outside. Once our uh, focus shifted to the outside world, we started ripping it. Don't think there is some other reason. It is all in pursuit of human well-being, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Everything we have done is in pursuit of human well-being. But in the last hundred years, though we have ripped the planet bald, not because of age, 
simply because we plucked it out. Have we achieved well-being, I'm asking you? They are telling me the world food industry is 7.6 trillion dollars. The pharmaceutical industry is 7.2 trillion dollars. And the, by the end of 2017, they say pharmaceutical industry will be bigger than the food industry. That means we are eating more medicine than food. We can't claim we are well. Da-da! <laughs>